I want to explore the topic of optimistic updates using Django and HTMX in this video. Now the idea behind optimistic updates is that when you perform some kind of action on the user interface, users don't like to wait for a long time for some feedback to occur after they perform that action. Now the reason for this wait is that sometimes there's some latency from the server in sending the response based on that action. And typically you would deal with this by showing a spinner when the request is in flight, but optimistic updates are another approach. And we're going to have a quick look at these in this video. Now in a nutshell, when we perform an action, such as on this to-do list, when we click this bin icon, we want to actually delete that to-do and thereby delete it from the database on the Django server. So if we have a look at the code I've got here, we have a to-do Django model, and then in the template that's rendered here, we have a for loop that iterates over all of the to-dos. And we also have this delete button here that when we click, we want to wire up an HTMX request. And that's what we're going to do in this video. And we're also going to show the optimistic updates. Now, if we go back to the UI, when we click the icon, I want to remove the to-do. And rather than waiting for that server response, we want to show that immediately on the user interface. That's what we're going to build in this video. So basically, the user interface is going to behave as though the change was successfully completed instantly. And that's before it receives the response from the server. And that's the reason it's called an optimistic update. You're optimistically updating the user interface and you're making the assumption that the server is going to respond in a particular way. Now, the complication of optimistic updates is that if it doesn't respond in that way, you need to then handle that on the client and show that feedback to the user. So this is going to be a simple video just to show a couple of techniques with HTMX. Now, here's one example of an optimistic update. If you've ever been on Reddit or Facebook and you click the upvote icon or the thumbs up icon as it is on Facebook, which I've thankfully not used in a long time, these can actually perform optimistic updates. They can show the upvote has occurred and that happens instantly, but on the server, it's going to return the response just to verify that. And if that response doesn't contain the verification that's expected, the upvote can be rolled back on the user interface. That's an example of an optimistic update as well. And these are becoming popular in front-end frameworks. For example, React now has this use optimistic hook. So you can use that to optimistically update React user interfaces based on some kind of function. So let's get started here. We're going to set up an HTMX request on this bin icon to remove the to-do from the server. And then after we've performed the action, later in the video, we're going to wire up the optimistic updates. Let's go to VS Code. Now I'm loading HTMX into this application here in the base.html template. And we also have Tailwind CSS. What we're going to do to start with is go to index.html. And this button here, when we click it, we want to send the request to the back end to remove the to-do. So we're going to start there and let's add some HTMX attributes to this button. Now I'm going to add HX delete because we're wanting to delete a to-do. So let's send that delete request and we're going to use Django's URL template tag here. And we're going to send this request to a given URL. Now I'm going to create this URL in a second. It's going to be called delete to-do and we're going to pass the to-do's ID as a parameter in that URL. So let's go to urls.py and we're going to define this delete to-do path. So in the URL patterns, let's say we have an endpoint here of delete slash to do. And then we need to have a dynamic parameter here. And that's going to be the primary key of the to do that we're going to delete. Now we want to call a view here that we're going to define in a second. And I'm going to call this view to do delete. And let's finally give this a name of delete to do so that it matches what we have in this URL template tag. So now that we have this URL, we're going to define the to do delete view here. Let's go to views.py and define the function and that will take the request and it will also take the primary key of the to-do that we want to delete. Now I'm going to use a shortcut function in Django called get object or 404. And what we're going to do in the to-do delete view here is we're going to fetch the given to-do using that function there. So it's going to be a to-do model and we want to look it up by primary key here. So that will fetch that from the database. And if we don't get a 404, we know we have the to-do and we can call the dot delete method on that model instance. And then what I'm going to do is create a response here, and that's going to be an HTTP response from Django. And I'm going to give this a status of 204. I'll explain why in a second. We also need to import HTTP response at the top. So let's do that at the top here. And then I'm going to add one more line here, and I'm going to return the response in between those. So we're going to add this one line in a second, but I'm going to go to the HTMX documentation just now. So I'm on a page here for requests and responses in HTMX. And we're going to look at these two lines here. So sometimes you might want to do nothing in the swap, but still trigger a client side event. So that's what we're going to do in a second. And for that situation, what you can do is return a 204 no content response code. So HTMX is going to ignore the content of that hypermedia response. And that's what we're going to do here. And that's why we've returned an HTTP response with a status of 204. But what we can also do is add a header here called HX trigger. And that's going to trigger a client side event. 
and I'm going to call this event to do deleted and then we can accept that event on the client and perform some kind of action. So basically this event here, to do deleted, if the client receives that event, we know that this code has processed and we've deleted the to do on the back end. Now, if you go to index.html, on the button here where we have this delete request, we can actually listen for that event. And we can do that using the hx-on attribute. And then we use a colon here and the name of the event. In this case, the event is called to do deleted. And what we can do is we can get the closest li tag so we can use this dot closest and we can pass li into that. And then on the DOM, that element is gonna have a remove function to actually remove it from the user interface. So let me explain what's going on here. When we get the to do deleted event on the front end, this nearest li here, which is the one containing the to do, that is going to be removed from the DOM. Now this is not gonna be an optimistic update because the server is going to respond with this event after the given to do is deleted from the database. So it's gonna wait and there's gonna be that latency between client and server. Let's see that in action just now. If we go back to the user interface here and I'm gonna refresh this page and that's gonna bring in HTMX. And then let's say we wanted to get rid of TypeScript. Let's remove that and you can see it's gone from the UI. Now, why might we want optimistic updates? Let's go back to the server and let's imagine that there's some kind of complex processing going on here. So let's import Python's time module and let's call time.sleep and pass in two seconds. And if we go back to the UI here, what we're gonna do here is delete another to-do. And it's always good to show feedback when this happens, but you can see when we click Learn Python, it's gonna take two seconds to remove that from the DOM. And that's because the server is taking two seconds to process that request and return the response. So what can you do in these situations? One thing you can do is show a spinner and that's a very common approach. And in some ways that's a better approach than an optimistic update sometimes. It's much simpler and users universally understand what spinners are. On the other hand, optimistic updates can be a nice enhancement to the user interface. So we're going to show that in a second, but if you do want to show the spinner, HTMX has a handy attribute for that. I'm gonna search for that. It's called HX indicator. So that can be used to show some kind of indicator like a spinner when these requests are in flight. Now, if we go back to this to-do list, one kind of optimistic update we can show here is a message that says deleting to-do. So when we click the icon, it could say deleting to-do. And one other thing we can do in the approach that we're going to take is to add a hidden attribute and hide the given role while we're waiting on the response. So that's preemptively going to remove this to-do from the DOM when the delete icon is clicked. So let's use HX on again for this optimistic update. Let's go back to the button that's sending the delete request. And we're going to use HX-on. And this time we're going to listen to an HTMX event, and that's the before request event. This is an event that fires just before HTMX sends the Ajax request to Django. And what we can do there is grab this li here using this dot closest. So we're going to do that again here. And we can access the attributes class list with the dot class list property. And then we can add a class here of hidden. Now I've got Tailwind CSS in this project. So what this is going to do before the request is sent, it's going to add a hidden class to the row. And I'm going to copy this and we're going to add a second attribute after the request. So let's paste that in here. And we're going to change the event to HX on after request. And we're going to remove the hidden class in that case. So let's see what happens now. If we go back to the user interface, I'm going to delete learn SQL and you can see that it's removed immediately. But the response from the server might not have been sent for two seconds in this case. And again, if we go back to the server, I'm going to bring up the dev tools here and we're on the network tab. And let's say we don't want to go to the gym today. When we click this, you can see it's been removed from the DOM, but the response takes two seconds to come back from the Django server. And that response is the 204 no content response. And if we look at the response headers here, you can see we have this HX trigger header set to the custom event of to do deleted. So the item is removed immediately and it's removed optimistically before we get a response from the server. I want to emphasize though, you should be very careful with optimistic updates. If the request goes wrong and something fails, for example, you could end up with inconsistent user interface versus backend state. And that's something you definitely want to avoid. So we need a rollback mechanism for these optimistic updates. What I'm going to do now is go back to the views.py file and we're going to introduce a failure to this view. So from django.http, we're currently importing HTTP response. I want to import something else and that's this one here, HTTP response server error. We're going to raise that in the view. So let's go down to the delete view here and just raise that after we've slept for two seconds. So now if we go back to the user interface, I'm gonna open the dev tools again. And this time when we click learn go here, you can see the request is in flight. It was removed from the DOM, but after we get the error here, and that's the status code of 500, you can see the item has been brought back into the DOM. Now, why is this happening? If we go back to index.html, 
what we've got in the button here are these two HX on events. So before HTMX sends the request, the LI is going to have the hidden class from Tailwind added to its class list. That's going to hide it from the document, but it doesn't remove it from the DOM. And then after the HTMX request receives its response, what we're going to do is remove that hidden class from the LI tag. Now this works because after the request, if it's been successful, we're going to remove that LI from the DOM using the remove function. And that will actually delete it from the list, but the other two are just toggling that hidden class. And that allows you to roll back the hide mechanism when you receive a response and the to-do is not deleted from the DOM. Now before we move on here, I've used the wrong keyword here. Let's go back to views.py. We should be returning that error here. So let's just make sure this continues to work. If we go back to the document here and we delete this to-do, you can see that it's going to be rolled back and it's brought back into the DOM. So just a note on these HTTP response types, you return them from the view, you don't raise them. Now we can actually perform further actions if the HTMX request has failed. And that's because HTMX will tell us if the request has been successful or not. There is a boolean that we can actually check. So let's go to the documentation. And this is the documentation for the after request event. I'll leave that below the video. And what you can see here are some details that are available on the event object. And one of them here is this detail.successful. So that's going to be true if the response has a 200 status code. And on the other hand, we also have a detail.failed, and that's going to be true if the response has a status code that doesn't begin with 20. Now, I'm going to add some code into the after request block here. So this is going to look a bit weird, but we can actually extract this to a function in JavaScript if we want. But I'm just going to write it in line here, and let me minimize the terminal while I do this. So what we're going to do is create an if statement here, and we're going to check if event.detail.successful is not going to evaluate to true. In other words, has the request failed? And we're going to perform some actions if we have an unsuccessful request. So we're going to start by using document.create element. We're going to create a span element. And then we're going to add some text content to that. And the purpose of this is just to show some additional feedback to the user when the request fails. So I'm going to create some text content in that error span. It's going to say failed to delete to do. And then we're going to take the error span and we're going to access its class list. And we're going to add this tailwind class of text red 500. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to access that li tag that represents the to do. And we're going to call the append child method. And we're going to add that new span that we've created to the li tag. So that's going to add that as the last child to this li tag. So let's see how that looks now. If we go back to the UI here and I refresh this page, when we delete learn go, it's going to be rolled back at the end of the event or at the end of the request rather. And you can see we now have this error text appearing in the LI telling the user that they've failed to delete the to-do. And you can give more information. You can tell the user there's been a server error. So you can customize this message as well. But this is just showing how we can perform these optimistic updates. And if anything goes wrong, we can roll that back. Now notice this problem here where we have a duplicated text message here. So if the failure occurs twice, it's just going to append a second span to that. What you could do is you could check for the existence of this span within the li tag before you actually create and append a new one. So I'll leave that one as an exercise for you if you want to try that out. And of course, if you're not a fan of embedding all this logic on an HTML element or within an HTML attribute, you can extract this logic to a dedicated JavaScript function that you put into a script tag. So that's going to be all for this video. What we've done here is we've shown what optimistic updates are and how we can use them with HTMX and with a Django backend. And with these attributes on the button, it doesn't really matter what your backend is. It could be in any framework or language. As long as you're able to perform these actions before the request and after the request, then you can optimistically update the UI and roll back and show more feedback to the user if anything goes wrong. So if you can think of any other examples of optimistic updates, leave them in the comments. I'd be interested to know. And if you're not a fan of optimistic updates and you think a spinner will do, also let us know in the comments because I know it's a controversial subject in the React world. So I'd be interested to know what you think about that. So thank you for watching this video. If you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page that we've got in the top comment and any more suggestions for HTMX content, let me know in the comments as well. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.